On social media, he is the SA media, digital media and strategy to former vice president Atiku Abubakar and um, the current flag bearer of the PDP presidential candidate. Um, Mr. Jimola Wariwaju is a very eloquent, intelligent, and um, passionate Nigerian. He, if you follow him on Twitter, you see his activism there. He's a, he's a staunch supporter of Atiku and of the PDP party. I also know he contested for policy secretary in Lagos State for the, in the PDP party. Um, he's yet today to discuss with us the candidacy of Atiku Abubakar. What does it mean to the youth, to young Nigerians? Is it the past or the future? But before we delve into um, that topic, I'd like to hear from Mr. Ademola himself and just give us a brief intro about yourself. Tell us your antecedents in the political space, whether you have contested for governor before, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Latif. Um, good evening to the viewers at home. Um, you know, I think um, the, the, the part of me that is most, um, that connects with this conversation the most is the fact that um, I, I'm, my journey into politics wasn't deliberate. Oh. Um, about uh, sometime in 2010, um, I mean, I was, I'd been in unionism back in the university, but, um, you know, I was content to just make comments on Facebook, you know, Facebook was the platform at yeah, that time, you know, so I was content to make comments there, and one day I was watching television, and um, it was around 4pm in the evening, and then I saw then Governor of Lagos, the Raji Fashola, um, you know, he was having an, a program, a town hall meeting, and he said something that struck me, he said, um, there can be no low cost houses because there can be no, there because there is no low cost cement and no low cost iron rods and in my head i'm like what's this man saying like when the former governor of lagos state latif jaconde when he provided all those low cost houses it wasn't because um, the cost of cement was cheap or because iron rods were cheap you know but because this was what he felt he wanted to achieve and so he diverted a lot of um, government funds into providing low-cost houses. And that's why, you know, you have a lot of middle class and even lower class families, you know, all around, you know, Paja Axis, um, you know, you have so many Jack on the Estates all over Absolutely. the place, Mile 2, Isolo, you have Jack on the Estates, mm. Al um, Alakai, Ponri, all those places. He built those places. So, so I immediately went back to Facebook. I ranted for a bit. And then I started to ask, who is running against this guy? I want to support anybody who's running against this guy. Mm -hmm. And that was when I saw someone, you know, who was running against him, and I devoted my time. Um, of course, but I didn't kid myself, okay? I, 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 I chose PDP because I felt PDP had different, was the opposition that could defeat, um, that could defeat Raji Fashola mm. at that time. But unfortunately, the candidate I was with was a weak candidate. We only managed to get seven votes at the um, party primaries. for gubernatorial primaries. So he didn't become um, the gubernatorial flag bearer. But, you know, but I built on that and worked for another gubernatorial candidate in the next election cycle. And that's how I've just been on that journey. So um, I say that because I know a lot of young people watching us are also quite active on social media. Absolutely. And, you know, so I'm just saying that, you know, um, it's not a bad place to start, but you have to evolve into um, the real politics. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, what I hear so far, your involvement, active involvement in this thing started from the um, um, antagonizing of um, BRF. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I don't listen to us right now, so you know. <laughs> Because we've been president. You've never had a South South person who's been president before. Been president, because we've been there's a power president. structure. So here's how PDP does it. You have the president, you have the vice president, you have the Senate president, you have the deputy Senate president, yes. you have the speaker, you have the deputy, deputy speaker. speaker, and then you have the SGF, and then some Chief can include the party chairman. So PDP makes make sure that everybody has a stake in that governance. So you have South Easterners who have been party chairman before. The Southwest has never been party chairman of PDP before. The one time we were supposed to get it, some governors in their wisdom thought it wise to bring um, Prince Uche Secundus. Secundus. And then after Secundus, when we said again, okay, 
let the Southwest go again. They felt, no, this time around, you should go to the North. And then they brought EOCHI. So Southwest has never been party chairman before. Southeast has been party chairman several times. Southwest has never been sending president before. Southeast has been pres sending president several times. Southeast, Southwest, you know, we only, Southwest only got um, um, deputy, uh, deputy speaker under the APC government at some point. I, I can't remember. Yeah, it, currently, it, it's currently speaker. That's sort of the now the currently moment. speaker, you know. So, but basically the idea is inclusive governance is about everybody. It means that um, nobody can take a decision on their own, and that's what PDP does. Um, I believe that the agitation for a Southeastern president at this point is because of what people perceive as the subjugation of um, the Southeast under this present government. You look at the government, the president is a Fulani Muslim, the vice president is a Yoruba, Yoruba. Christian, the Senate president is another Fulani Muslim, the um, deputy Senate president is from the South South, you, um, the speaker is from the Southwest, wow. and then the deputy speaker is also a Northerner. So what's the stake of the Southeast under this government? So that's why a lot of these agitations are coming up. Um, and I think, you know, that power balance is unfair to the Southeast. We have to make that clear. It's unfair. It doesn't, it's not helping inclusive governance, it's not helping us be, become a nation. And that's why you need to have a unifier. When you have a unifier, it would ensure that everybody is a part of the governance structure. But in any case, you know, he's running with somebody who's Ifan Yokoa. Um, um, of course, you know, people are now trying to say Ifan Yokoa, but if you hear Ifan on a good day, the first thing that you think is this person is Zibu. from that place. And he speaks it well. Um, and the Anioma people have always, and he says he has never been one to shy away from the fact that. Um, that is Igbo. As a matter of fact, you know, a lot of people within the party believe that if somebody had not left the party, perhaps that person would have been the running mate. Because in 2019, when Atiku chose him to be running mate, it was against all odds. Even the Igbo governors did not want um, him to be governor at that time. But let's just have a unifier this time around and know that everybody is a part of that governance structure. I mean, your, your perspective of this unification is quite interesting. Mm. But we'll not trust it further. <laughs> so let, let's, let's bring it back home. You know, so we want to... Do you think that right now there's, a, there's an awakening of the youth in politics? Mm. They, 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 are, they, are they more interested in governance? Do they want to partake more? Especially since the happenings of the NSAs. And if you think so, what is Atiku doing to capture these new people? We just saw the recent electoral voters registration. 12 million people registered. Over 70% were youth, age between 18 to 35. Is I that think, the voter registration? I think, I think the... I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, and we can see the OB movement uh. fiercely moving. It's all over everywhere. The youth, everybody is as an obedient now. You know, you wish, you wish <laughs> I think is it everybody really? That's what it seems like. I don't think so. So, so you see, you see for me, so. what I think is the game of politics is a game of perception. Mm. And the perception right now is that every youth is an, is an obedient. So well, what, is, what is PDP and Atiku doing to capture this youth? Well, I mean, look, young people have always been a part of the focus of PDP. And... Going into this election, the fact that we have a youth leader for the first time um, who's younger than 30 shows that PDP understands the true demographics of young people. Um, a lot of us might say that we are youth, but we may not really be. Um, it's just that Nigeria has made us um, that way where, where you know, we are not at, um, even though we are, we, are, we are at a certain age, we are not able to do the things that we could do if we are another country. So, mm. so um, that's, that's one thing. But um, we know that we have a lot of work to do. We know that we have a lot of work to do when it comes to that demographic and also for the fact that it's different layers of um, young people. You look at the, um, the, the different, the millennials, you look at the Gen Zs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you have to appeal to them. Um, and, and we are going to do that. Um, I always like to say that Atiku Abaka is going to earn every vote. Um, and I think, you know, at the end of the day, I believe that pragmatics would win. Um, something we've been educating people about recently is vote wisely. Um, what does it mean to vote wisely? What does wisdom mean? Wisdom is simply that you, you, you have a goal. Um, you want to get rid of 
a government, you vote for the person who is most likely to help you get that government out. And that's what it means to vote wisely. Um, you know, hoping, hoping that certain things will scale might not necessarily be a, a strategy. But again, you know, a lot of what is going on now, I like it. And because, like I said, it's where I also started my politics from, although I was um, um, politically conscious enough to pick my platform wisely. I could have gone for some lesser parties and you know, we are trying to build from there. But I felt, look, we have to be realistic with ourselves. Yes, the party... At the time, the ruling party at the time. You said what? Yeah, the ruling party at the time. When you, when you, yeah, it when was you the ruling party at the federal level. At the federal level. Yeah, at yeah. the federal level, but in Lagos State. Yeah, federal I'm, mind. I've always been in Lagos State. You know, my politics has always mostly been here. So, so but I think, you know, young people um, will look at the board um, as soon as we get closer to election. Because, look, let's not, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. But that is a formidable opponent. And if we, if we feel that, you know, getting APC out of government is something that we, is for our collective good, basically, rescuing the nation for them, from them, then we have to go with the most Over pragmatic um, means to do it. Personally... Do you, do you think him formidable? Is it a threat? I mean, I mean let, let's put it in perspective. Mm. Right now, we know that Peter is from the south, southeast. Southeast gives block votes to the PDP. Yes. Every election. Now, those block votes... May not come to PDP anymore. I think it's going now to come. They have, they, have a, they have a son I think it's going to and come. a brother. I think it's going to come. I think it's going to come. You see, people underestimate what um, the behemoth that um, PDP is. You see, in Peter Obi State, Anambra State, on election day, you have three formidable people who are running elections on that same day, senatorial elections. Oh. You have Senator, um, Senator Uchie Kunife, you have um, Senator Stella Odua, and you have um, Chris Uba. Those are three stalwarts, and they are going to be rooting for PDP all through. And you have House of Representatives. I mean, we're all surprised recently when INEC list came out, and I went through the INEC list. Labour Party doesn't have a single senatorial aspirant in Lagos State. Lagos, the Labour Party doesn't have a single House of Reps candidate in Lagos State. That's not a party that can scale. You know, so yes, the excitement is all good right now, but when it comes to it, it's going to flounder because you see, when Peter Obi was leaving PDP, I mean, if he had defected with his ward chairman or his local government chairman, then I could say, okay, that's some influence. Mm. I like the fact that a lot of young people, and you see, the catchy point is that, you know, young people see him as he's different from the rest of them, you know, he's, um, he's fresh, you know, he carries his bag by himself, he doesn't, he doesn't fly private jets, you know, those are the kind of things that is fascinating them. But we are going to have to start asking hard questions, and I believe that once campaigns start from next week, hard questions will be asked. People are going to ask you, what qualifications do you have to be commander-in-chief of the armed forces? What qualifications do you have to be able to confront Boko Haram? What personal relationships do you have to be able to bypass some bureaucratic bottlenecks? Because you see, let's face it, the economy might be the biggest problem of Nigeria today. Um, it might look like the biggest problem of Nigeria today, mm. but the biggest problem of Nigeria today is that we don't even have a Nigeria. And that's why I think we're starting from Unifier. Let's first of all have a Nigeria. When we have a Nigeria, we can then look at the economy of the country. So. Um, Economy being your strong point is good, but it might not be good enough in the long run because you have other issues to deal with. Um, Article of Workers Manifesto is a five-point agenda. Unity seed, unity, S for security, education, economic, uh, economic, the economy, and devolution of powers, which is a big southern agenda. Because look, what is what is what the South has been asking for. And he's the only candidate who has been bold enough to say, you know what, we have too much powers in Abuja. If the powers were not too much in Abuja, nobody would care so much about the president. Um, everybody would want to be governor and prove yourself and do good for your state, you know. And that's what the South has always been talking about. And Atuk Abubakar is one position who has been consistent on that topic right from 1992. So I think, you know, it's going to be a tough battle, but I think at the end of the day, PDP will um, um, emerge tops in this election.